A welding hood is easily the most important piece of equipment a welder can carry. On today's episode, we're going to try to cover them all, from the cheapo depots to the custom chop pipeliners and pancakes and even PAPRs. We've got you covered. Now, I'm a firm believer that it's not about the hood that you're wearing, rather the who's wearing the hood. So you can get away with a lot of different welding hoods, but I am also a firm believer of you get what you pay for and quality does matter. We're in Pasadena, Texas at Outlaw Leather. I'm going to show you some of the options. I always grab a hood first and check out the headgear. There's not too much accessories that come with a welding hood. You can try changing maybe the front out, the headgear, some of the nuts, but I always grab the headgear to see if it's the type I like. If it's something like this headgear down here, this elastic right here, oh, this elastic is absolute worst. I've seen people use it, but I just don't think they use their hood all that often. Not to mention the hood nuts on the side, these plastic ones that come pretty much standard with any one of these pipeliners. They strip really easily, so it's only a matter of time before you start twisting those things before they're just not going to get tight anymore. They'll do. I, I ran these for years, but they always tend to tear when you, you really get to start to work in. And this sometimes, the crank on it kind of breaks. I really recommend if you're going to stick with the headgear like this, and this is the hood you want, just go ahead and get some metal fasteners. The aluminum ones, they've got some that fit these pipeliners perfectly, and they've got some that fit these other hoods with, say, like these plastic fasteners. I actually do like these plastic fasteners. They really work well. They don't usually strip and you can get them really tight to where it really holds really heavy on there. But I really like the headgear that has more than one point on the top, has a good ratchet on the back and has the ability to adjust the inside here. I'm not even going to even consider a hood that has some cheap headgear or at least I'm going to probably buy some headgear on the side because you can always buy everything separate and really customize it to yourself. Now looking at these classics right here, this is your classic pipeliner hood. Not necessarily this one that's so bedazzled, but this eggshell white is very common. But the biggest difference that you see in these two outside of the colors is this flip up attachment. This doesn't have any way for you to flip up or grind. If you had an auto dark lens in there, it would still probably flash on you because you're doing all that grinding. So the solution for that is you can buy this separate setup. You have to do some cutting and whatnot to get this flip up attachment into your pipeliner hood. That way you can flip up and do your grinding. Well, while that is pretty convenient, it does add some weight and it is a little bulky on the front of this thing. Welders will typically take something that has a little bit of weight and they'll modify it by doing the chop. You can see this hood here that's been chopped. We can see the difference in the actual welding hood right here where we have a lot more weight on the top and on the bottom on this hood here. This one's got a little bit of leather on it to add some style, but also block out a little bit of that light. And it's just added protection from anything overhead. They'll even go so far as to chop in the bottom of it too. So you see this slim fit hood here. This is one of my favorites because it kind of takes the qualities of the hood that's like this one. It's that square body hood. But the coolest thing about the square body hood is that flip up attachment is built into it. But having that built in attachment that sits really flat is pretty nice to have. I really like these square body hoods for that reason. That's kind of the idea behind the slim line here is that it does have that flip up already in it, but Outlaw Leather developed their own molds so that you can still have that really flat design. Weight reduction on a hood is super valuable for someone who's wearing a hood all freaking day. Some companies will not let you use that hood. They'll say it's not safe. It's it's been modified, it cannot be modified. Outlaw Leather, even with a chopped hood, you can show them right here on the inside of the hood. It says ANSIISEA Z87 1. That basically means that they passed the safety rating and they didn't actually chop these. This is molded to this one shape. That's something to consider whenever you're going to buy a hood that has all these modifications on there. If your job is really strict, you might not be able to do it. As we work our way down this glorious wall of hoods, we get to the pipeline welding hood. Now, this is a funky looking welding hood, right? Got this big old circle on it. One side's usually the only side that's covered. But it does have a purpose for all of that. We'll start with the box on the back. That box on the back is usually made out of balsa wood. It's really lightweight. It's really soft. It's really malleable. You have to actually form this to your face. So you'll go about custom fitting it and doing some light sanding on there so it really fits your face. And when this wood gets broken in and used, it's honestly really soft. You can also, of course, adjust your strap on it, but the funky design is meant to keep a lot of spatter off the welder, especially with the type of welding that most pipeliners will do. And they're pretty much looking at this weld straight on, so they have this big covering here, and then only one side is covered because typically they're looking at a weld or a piece of pipe like that. And the way it was explained to me why it's open everywhere else is because usually in a pipeline situation, you got a lot of loud noises as far as engine drives and trucks and people hollering at each other, and you're trying to communicate with a helper. This being opened as it is, you can 
out to your helper and tell them go up, go down, grind a little bit there, whatever it may be. The other problem with that is not having that grinding ability with one of these pancakes. But Outlaw Leather, of course, has some innovative stuff. And they're coming out with some stuff like this right here, which is your typical pancake. But now we've got that really slim fit flip up adapter for whenever you've got to do some grinding or maybe your helper just isn't cutting it. The other nice thing that's being kind of evolutionized from these hoods is the backside. You're getting more of this kind of ski goggle feel. It's really comfortable. You don't have to do all that sanding. I will say it's a little bit heavier than that balsa wood, but this is pretty convenient and it's really comfortable when it comes to sticking it on your face. Now at first glance, you might just walk by this section here and not even notice what you're looking at. This is a pocket hood. It's kind of a funky little thing that a welder can carry when there's some tight spaces to be had. It's an unfoldable hood made out of leather, something durable, something that you can run your head up against some metal and of course handle some sparks too. You're really never happy when you have to pull it out, but you got it when you need it. And they even come with a little flip up adapter. You can see though, that flip up in a tight space is probably gonna give you some, some issues. Regardless, any one of the hoods here at Outlaw Leather can run you somewhere between like 100 bucks to shoot $500 if you really got some of that snazzy leather on there. Now that we've seen some of the middle of the road options, now we're gonna go find those cheap hoods. I think one of the cheapest welding hoods that I would recommend lives here. Oh dude, this one right here is the very first hood I ever had. First auto dark hood I ever had. Still got some pricier ones. Look at the viewing area. That's why it's so important. There's the wannabe Lincoln hood here. I don't see it at all. They're gonna make me ask Jeff Bezos. I can't believe they didn't have this hood. I have been seeing that hood in that store for years. Of course, Mr. Bezos has it. Check it out. This one right here, it's like your wannabe pipe liner hood. It's $21.99, it used to be 20 bucks. But I mean, look at that. It's just like a simple little flip up, just like you would want for your pipe liner. Oh, here's another one right here. It's a little bit more expensive, but at least it gives you some more pictures to look at. 25 bucks, and look, dude, it's got the decent headgear. It doesn't even have the cheap stuff. It covers everything you really need. The only thing that you're really gonna wanna do with that hood is put a decent lens in it, because every one of these hoods that you get, it either comes with or doesn't come with at all, like a cheap plastic one or a cheap glass one. That pretty much leads us right into what we really need to talk about is the most important part of the hood, the welding lens. I don't know about you guys, but when I buy a hood, I pretty much go into customization right away, even if it already has been chopped and whatnot. One of those accessories being the welding lens that goes in it. As you can see by the store that we went in, there's a ton of varieties of auto darks, and I've got even more here, and the list goes on and on and on. The biggest difference between a passive lens or an auto dark lens is this passive lens is going to be the set shade that you pick. If you want a shade 10, it's gonna be a shade 10 and only a shade 10. You're gonna see nothing out the other end of it until you strike an arc. If you're working working with the process that has higher amperages or that is brighter, then you'll have a darker shade like a 12 or a 13. But for any of these two by fours, you have a whole bunch of these auto dark companies out there with different lenses. It's hard to say what the quality is behind a welding lens. I don't know a whole lot about it. So that's why I'm gonna give my buddy Daniel a call. He's the one that makes all of my passive lenses that I put in pretty much any one of my hoods. And that's that vintage view welding lens. So let me give him a call real quick. Daniel, how the hell are you, man? I'm doing good. I'm making a YouTube video on, you know, welding hoods and whatnot. What kind of defines like the difference between one of the gold glass lenses that you can get for 20 bucks versus, you know, a more high quality lens and, and the colors that go along with it? When the, the welding lenses are made, they're just made with one solid color. So when you're just welding with a green lens, that's the only color visible light that is let into that glass. With the Levi Blue, you can still see some kind of reds and you can still see some kind of greens. Okay, so what you're really saying is like different colors really comes down to a preference. I lit up with this blood orange one the other day and it's really cool, you know, the color that I'm coming up with, but it's like really hard for me to see. It was just so, so red and so orange that yeah. it wasn't for me, but like, man, that, that Black Dahlia is my personal favorite or the AO Classic, very, very nice. Now, when it comes to an auto dark lens, in my opinion, man, I think they're a dime a dozen for these like little two by fours. How do you know which one's good? Like what is the standard that they're all going by? You have uh, um, common circuitry and then you have industrial grade circuitry. Okay. Like, so when you start grinding all that grit and grime that gets inside the circuitry. So that's why we designed our lenses encased in resin. You can throw them in water. You're not gonna get any grinding dust in them. Like what about like the sensors and like some of them flashing a lot easier than others? That all depends on the positioning of the photodiode within the lens or that reflector that they put 
in front of the photodiode. That's one thing too, is the batteries, a lot of these companies use cheap batteries. When you get too close to your well zone, heat is a battery's worst enemy. That's why these welding lenses fail, because the batteries just give out. For me, you know, like the difference between trying to spend like $400 compared to like a $30 auto dark that you could pick up at the store. For me, just the longevity, something that you can really rely on that's not going to hurt your eyes. It's good. It's safety equipment. It's not just bling. So now we kind of know that as far as passive lenses go, you know, lenses that just stay the certain shade that you got, it's kind of about preference and about the certain person, the color that you really like. Now, when it comes to auto dark hoods, we got to look at the quality of the hood. $400 hood versus a $30 hood. The shell, and then we're looking around at some of the features on here. We've got your sensitivity adjustment on this hood. You've got your delay. And then if we look on the side, we've got the adjustment as far as the shade. I just really don't like anything on the side of my hood because it always is subjected to getting whooped or beat it or dropped on and if that knob breaks you're kind of toast the headgear honestly isn't half bad but what i don't like is this sound here that ratchet on the back of this thing you got no gears baby that thing is gonna break very quickly now what you get for four hundred dollars might be a little bit different again you're going to be able to see the same puddle the biggest difference here is you get a lot more viewing space it's got more of those sensors that daniel talked about this hood is i think a year and a half old now it's got a light on it so now we can have a little light on the top and we have our grind mode buttons on the outside here and you have to hold it in order to switch to grind and then you can cycle through and you'll notice you have a whole bunch of different other modes like your cut mode your grind mode your weld mode and an auto mode where it actually senses the type of arc that's in front of you so if you're doing plasma cutting or arc gouging or you're doing flux core welding to tig welding it can adjust the shade on it not only that you're going to of course set your memory on here you can sit here and hook this thing up to bluetooth on your phone and get more stats real time to your phone this is probably one of my favorite headgears is off these vikings you just see that you get a lot of connection points to your head as far as the two here and then a little bit for your dome and then if you listen to this right here that's got a ratchet. That's got some crank to it. This headgear fits anybody's head, no matter who you are. This one too, it's not the worst I've seen. Thing sits really high on my head, like my eyes are right here. <laughs> Adjusting that headgear is super important for someone who's new. You can weld with both of these hoods, guys, but it's all about the longevity that these lenses are gonna last you. If they're gonna flash on you, you start blocking sensors or you're welding in tight spots, this hood's not gonna cut it. You're definitely gonna be annoyed and you're not gonna be able to see what you're doing. And you can't weld what you can't see. Now, if you really wanna break the bank, you can get something like this. This is a PAPR. This not only protects your eyes, like every welder needs, but it also protects your lung. This is gonna encase me in a full setup where it'll actually pull in fresh air and keep me safe from all the hazardous fumes that welding has to offer. This one's a bit cumbersome because it's heavy and it's like kind of top heavy. They might have a belt, they might have a backpack. They usually have a really nice welding hood, top of the line headgear, top of the line lenses, and it's top of the line protection when it comes to welding. Now you're gonna end up spending a pretty penny on something like this, but you're all the way safe. At the bare minimum, get yourself a cheap hood, start putting some nice lenses in it, fix up that little bit of headgear, and then you're in business. Or you can holler, of course, our friends at Outlaw Leather and they've already got you hooked up. Hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching.